Hey there, Boots Owen here. A tale of two Henrys, I think we're gonna call this one. So Henry number one, get that stuff out of there. Henry number one is a pneumatic. And Henry number two is a Henry. Just take his snout off. So Henry number one, I think Big Henry is working. Let's confirm all of this now, imminently. So where's the dust going to go? I have tried turning it on already, I think. Okay, Henry, let's turn you on. So this is a pneumatic. I can't see it on this camera. It's an NV NRV 240-11. Can't see any light on there. Let's turn it on. Yeah, there's a light coming on there. So last week when students were moving out I picked up both of these I think this one just works but the issue with this was that the sweeper head on the bottom the, the brush bar thing had been chewed to pieces by a dog that's what it looked like and so I just pulled it off and threw it away and this was the end of it and if you can see in there it's all gunky so I'm gonna get a brush on that and give that a clean but it's been just soaking it in water for a while so that it can come clean. Meanwhile, in another bin, I found this fellow, an aero brush, uh, and it's completely gummed up with yuck, so we'll have a go at cleaning that in this video. And then the last one is this Henry. So this pneumatic is just going out of the way. I'll put a new brush bar on it and that'll be fine seems to work. I'll give it a wipe later on, but that's not something that really is so interesting. This is HVR 160-11, smaller one, clearly. Now it's on. The switch is on. Is it a switch fault? Who knows? So we'll get into this one today and see what we can do. I'm hoping it's clean. It doesn't really matter for the top. Actually, it is remarkably clean. Really? It is remarkably clean. Look at that. That's a bit of a leaf in there and a bit of moisture, maybe. Right. So, Henry, let's try, let's see what I need to do here. Let's roll that up. It's, it's probably come out of a rental house. It has a Torx bits. So the screws are all out. I took out all of them. I, I, I maybe don't need to take out the three in the center if it's just if it's just the switch. So with the ones out, if the four on the outside were out, you'd be able to lift off that cover. While I'm here, I'll lift this one away. We know that power was getting through the cord because the light was on. So because that light came on, we know that power is getting in as far as here. So we can snap this fellow here off now. This is quite a clean, quite a clean machine. Um, So that's the live side. It's not live at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll plug it in and test it with the multimeter to see if the switch is working. And if it's not the switch, it's the motor. And whether that then works or not is a different question as to why a motor would be wrong. So that's now live. And as you can see, the light's on. Yeah, and I'll try and touch these. Can you see that multimeter? You can, I guess. So the switch is on. The voltage coming through to the motor. So is the motor burnt out? Well, let's see. If I take that off, those contacts in there are live. And I'll switch them off. And now they're not live. Right. So I need to get into the motor. There's some little insect roaming in there. Into the motor, I need to lift this one off like that. So I was lucky that I had taken out those three screws and I immediately see a load of rust. Um, That'll tell me that something's not good on the brushes. Let's have a look at the commutator. It's there, so it's not too bad. There's a bit of there's a bit of dust on that filter. So let's try and lift this out with it. A 
It looks like something got wet in there at some point. There's a lot of dust coming off this. A bit of wet over there. I'm going to get other Henry to give this a clean up now. Let's lift that out. I've got a wasp beside me. Very strange. It looks like a wasp in the Henry. <laughs> what? What's going on? Okay, that's that. I can leave the rubber on. It's clearly had a bit of moisture on it. The motor is just completely seized, so I presume that's burnt out. It's hardly worth trying to get that going. I might have some spares, so it's worth having a look. So here's a box of salvaged and believed working. I can tell that's a Dyson. That's very small. I don't know what that is. It doesn't look right either. I think that's a really big one off a of big Henry. Again, don't know. Is that about right? That's not quite right. That one may have been a something, but it's got no brushes. That's too small. Yeah, I think this came off. That's a two-stage Henry. So I think I'm out of luck. Because trying to make these things fit, you think it's a good idea, but really it isn't. So I've given this a vacuum, and I have revived Henry motors in the past. It's all a bit crusty. So let's get a spanner or a socket on there. So if we could get it turning, there we go. And then we could check the operation of the brushes. See, it was just seized on something small. It's not even, it doesn't sound bad, really, I, I, I say. I have, I have revived a Henry, a James, I think, a yellow one in the past in a video that was so bad, it had um, basically been swimming for a while. Filthy, dirty, and completely seized, but just a bit of work got everything going. So the, the brush goes into a connector there, which needs to be jimmied up a little bit. Hmm, quite rusty. I don't want to go too hard at it because it looks like it's going to take the stake out with it. It's taken the stake out of the wire instead of... So that's not going to do much good. I wonder if I have a spare set. Because that's, that's seized, so that's not going to work. So if I have them, they should be in here don't see anything straight away that jumps out mostly washing machine motor brushes but the next option is to try and free it up something like that actually that looks about right you know do I have a pair of these yeah this one also has the stake come out with it these are made in brass that might be it. It would be wonderful if it was. These have taken the stakes out too. Now the winding wire is broken in there I can see, which doesn't help matters. So I'm going to have to unwind it by one stage. Let's try and get the other brush off first, which is indeed bringing the stake out with it. When I say the stake, I mean that little brass spade connector, so that's that's completely rubbed as well. Uh, to get that out, I have to get this off. To get this off, I have to pinch back those fellows. Tappy tap tap. No time like the present. go. 
So that's still moist and I don't know what it smells of. Nothing really. That's still moist in there. Let's get a cloth to give that a bit of a wipe. I need to give it a bit of a grip. This might need time to, to dry out a bit. So to grab this, I need to wrap it like this. And then I need to look at this th thread here with the nut on it quite carefully. And it looks like it has a right hand thread on it. And that would slice your hand open as quick as, as quick as lightning, so it would be good to grab it in some kind of a vice, but of course I don't have something like that capable of holding it without damaging it. So a rag. There we are. Just build up force until it comes off. But it does take quite a bit of effort. That's the nut off. And there's a washer. There's a washer there. There we go. And then there's this fellow kind of pressed in. If you can see. That's it off. And then there's another washer, usually. And this, this might be a pressed thing that... Uh, has a flange on it, I think. Yeah, like that. And then we've got some screws. Again, quite crusty here. But it's all coming apart, as you see. So what's the point in doing this job? Go buy a new motor, 20 quid, 15 quid, 25 quid, make up a number from the internet. Yeah, I could do that. Throw it away. Just save it for parts. Store it up until you need it. I don't think I've seen one coming apart like this before. Feels like it's stuck on something. I could do all of those things. It's stuck on the bearing on the shaft, I think. There we go. I could use a wash. This could all get a wash before it goes back together. Two more screws. I just like fixing things. I like figuring out how they work. I like taking them apart. Kind of like putting them back together, but not quite as much as taking them apart. Right, so the rotor may or may not fall out now if I ask it to. The bearing could be stuck on the other end. The bearing could be rusted in there, so... There it is. Came out bearing and all. So that commutator bar does not look perfect, but we're not going for perfection here. Those bearings are a bit a bit wild. They're okay. They're a bit grim. I think those are like skateboard bearings. I could put new ones on it. Not until I get it going. So this armature then should fall out. Oh, we lost a there's a spring washer that goes on behind the motor. I have to remember that rusty on the laminations in here but that doesn't matter doesn't stop it working so it was staked here and here so I need to remove one winding get the wire out I wonder could I do that from where I stand I might be able to on this side pop that wire out into the center like that and on this side where is it there it is you see down here, pop that wire out. Like the wire's loose already. So I need to catch it wherever it is here. Dental picks are good for stuff like this. So there's one wire. Then bring it back up over here. I wonder could I have done this in situ? I don't know if I could with the rotor in place. Bring that wire up and have it hanging out for now. Like that, and then I'll do likewise over here. A heat shield or an over temp sensor, something like that. But it's given me resistance, so it's probably not burnt out. It's probably not burnt out, so that means that something else failed before it failed. 
So we're losing the winding, so the motor may not be the same as before, but we've put it back into each side, and when we cinch that new brush in, it should catch it on. Brushes will go on last, so let's get that wire out of there for now. This might work, you know. So what was I at? These big screws need to go back in, then the armature, the rotor armature, then, what, the rotor. Then we can try brushes on it. Well, we we'll start rebuilding it as well. Now, how clean am I going to get this while I'm here? It's a bit dirty. I should give the other piece a wash, I think. Maybe just maybe a wipeout will do it. Because I don't really want to. If I wash it, I have to dry it. If I dry it, I'll give this fellow a, a wash because it looks a bit bizarre. I'll give that a wipe. So I've given this a wash out in some pretty grim-looking water. There's uh, motor codes there if you're interested. Press pause. I wouldn't be too worried about having this perfectly dry because when I run the machine it's going to dry it out a bit anyways. It's going to blow air through it. Little snail passages or shell like shells. Of course as soon as you turn the thing on again and run any dust through it it'll get caught as well. Why would this have happened? Well moisture followed by seizure I think is the issue. So it wouldn't take much for one of those bearings to be rusted up and for the shaft to get stuck. And once that's happened, you're not going to you're not going to get it to turn. And once it doesn't turn, then it'll burn out or something like that. So the spring and the rotor go in there. And the bearing, let's give that a tap. I think that's home. This probably has an orientation, so it has some little studs, little dowels. Let's try lining it up that way. Four screws to go back in. Yeah, but like I say, I just enjoy this process. This is this is relaxate relaxation to me. So that holds the rotor in place. This is a universal motor, brushed commutator universal motor, so it should run on AC or DC. Now, how do these guys look? I wonder if they'll press in if I can hold this wire. It would be better if that was loose first, I think. And I could try pressing this guy in first. Okay. You know, I can't I can't tell if that's done the job or not. Difficult to tell. Electricity will tell us if it's working or not. So, get that in there. Drive this down here. And then that'll be there. I don't know that I should really need to drive it with a hammer, but... It's pretty grim. So these are brass and they have verdigris and green stuff on them. Brass rust. But they might work. If I have a jumper cable now, I'll hotwire this motor rather than reassemble it. Because that's a lot of work. To find out that it doesn't work again. And then we can take appropriate action. So let's give that a snip. And this one. I did a similar job to this on a Dremel a while ago for a mate, John. He said his Dremel was broken, that what had happened was the wire had nipped. Set of jumper cables. This is the plug and cable off a washing machine. It has the wrong size spade connector on the end. In there, but I should be able to just force them on here and here. Like this. And like this. Now, oops. This has nothing on it. Now, why is it not turning? Hmm, suspicious. That's quite suspicious. So we were almost there a minute ago and it was turning freely. So why are these is the brushes putting too much resistance on it or what's going on? Let's put the... That won't do it. Let's put this on. See if it gives us better purchase. It's become very stiff. 
I'm glad I didn't just fire it up. I don't think that's got anything to do with the brushes. What I can do is put a drill on it and just give it a spin. So that's the impact driver. Let's see. So the drill can turn it, but I, I that should be a lot freer than that. No. Yeah, it's not it's not that, so I wonder if it is. I could clean these with alcohol or something, but clean them with WD forty just the same. But it just goes to show. Like that could have burnt out again and I would have blamed it on the faulty motor, but it could have been my reassembly. That's spinning freely still. Okay. Much better. Right. Ready to test. So I don't want to touch the brass can hold it like that, plug it in, switch it on. Yeah. Right. So it's off at the moment. Hold it like that. Don't know about you, but I couldn't in good conscience sell something like that. <laughs> it even smells like blue smoke. <laughs> Ozone or whatever. It's fair to say that that was shocking. <laughs> Yikes. Well, that's not clearly not going to be the kind of thing I can put back together and in good conscience give to anyone. <laughs> so let's just have a look at that commutator bar again. It didn't, it didn't look so bad. It's a little bit hot now. But I wonder if a clean up with some fine emery paper might help. I don't know. I don't know what else to do with it, really. It's, I, don't, I don't think it should be so bad. I don't think that could be put down to the brushes. It doesn't look that bad to me. The bearing's a little bit rocky. I guess that could be the problem. That bearing's better. How much more effort do I want to put into this? So the bearings are the same as uh, skateboard bearings, or roller skate bearings. 608... 608ZZ. So I'll put a new bearing on it and I'll give it a clean with some emery paper. It's moving anyways, so now I just need to put something small in there. There we go. It's coming at last. That new one's a sliding fit, which is not great. Very strange that it should be. I'm sure it's as good and as bad in that case. I can put that bearing on there, swap them over, that might give it a bit of a better better fit. It's not great though. I don't know why some 608s would be loose and some not. Tolerances. I'll just try switching them over for now then. I'll press those on in the vise and come back and give this a polish.